Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons. As a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for one year, I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today we are going to speak about meta hero pairs. Every single season, uh, meta heroes are changed. Somebody, some people are playing with different kind of heroes, but mostly there is always a meta version of every single legion type of in this game. And every season I'm going to speak about those meta hero pairs, which is most popular in the battlefields. The battlefield. Uh, I'm already in season TI, and it's time for me to speak about meta hero pairs for every single legion type. First of all, I will start speaking about infantry. Uh, after, like last season, infantry was very, very popular simply because of the Goresh and Skolgul. And it, it won't be a surprise if I will say that Goresh and Skolgul is the main infantry hero pair. One of the best hero pairs, um, especially for tier 5 players. Uh, tier 4s can be used too, but uh, in general, I think infantry heroes and infantry unit types are much, much better if you have a uh, tier 5 units in your legion. Why Skolgul and Goresh is so good? Simply because they are not only a tanky, they are dealing a lot of damage. Uh, also, Goresh has one of the best talent trees for the infantry uh, heroes, which is tank. Like, everybody should understand that there is like one particular talent tree for every single legion type in the game. For infantry, it's tank talent tree. For marksmen, it's precision. Uh, for mages, it's skill, and for cavalry, it's mobility, in my opinion. So, Goresh has a ta tank talent tree. Uh, I'm not sure if you are going to use um, for rallies the Goresh. If you are not tier 5 player, I would not recommend to do rallies in general. But uh, tank talent tree is one of the best in the game. More survivability, more counter-attack damage. So, if you are playing with Goresh and Skolgul, I would recommend to put Goresh as a primary hero and Skolgul as a secondary. Uh, also, if you like to play the mobility type of uh, infantry player, you always can run Skolgul as a primary, primary and you will go for the mobility talent tree, which will make you run like a cavalry player. Like some people are using Skolgul even with cavalry units, uh, simply because she's or he's super fast you will be able to catch every single legion type in the game and you are going to deal a lot of damage for the uh, play style i would recommend to have at least five one 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 uh, like on the boss heroes that's already uh, like talked a lot because the first skill of the every single hero is the most important skill and also if you will just check the skill set of the boss heroes you will understand that skolgul and goresh are more damage type of infantry heroes which will just rush into the battlefield they will be tanky because the damage reductions and in general infantry defenses bonuses and counter-attack damages you are getting a lot of shields a lot of defenses uh, as a uh, stats so with the uh, skills of the goresh uh, skolgul is very important uh, hero pair for goresh um, hp bonus uh, hp bonus again which gonna mean that you are going to stay alive for a long time uh, as a meta version goresh and skolgul is a meta infantry heroes but let's say you don't have um, like skolgul or goresh in general then of course you are going to go back to the most ordinary uh, infantry hero pair which is madeline and nika uh, nika is gettable from the gold chest which is easier for you to unlock her and even upgrade the skills you can see how much tokens i have currently for nika i just don't play as an infantry and that's why i'm not using her so like this is a second choice madeline and uh, nika counter attack damage type of uh, hero pair it's like a weaker version of uh, goresh and skolgul so if you don't have the newest infantry heroes you can always go for the madeline and nika and everybody should understand uh, madeline has one of the best skills in the game uh, legion capacity increase 15,000, which is giving you a lot of benefits in the game let's say you don't have uh, madeline or nika like i'm not sure why you should not have nika but let's say you don't have madeline at all uh, of course, there is a third version of infantry heroes, which is not meta, but we still need to speak about it, which is um, Garud and Eliana. It's more of a farming type of um, hero pair. You are going to get, uh, you are going to uh, use the Garud and Eliana hero pairs to tank tank the Darklings for you. That so it will be easier for you to level up those heroes. 
the Garwood and Eliana is all about healing, uh, especially if you have Eliana Awakened, you are getting additional heals, 400 uh, healing factor. And I'm not going to speak about Garwood at a lot, like Garwood itself is all about healing, nothing else. For the artifacts, um, for infantry heroes, it's pretty simple. Uh, there is a couple of uh, infantry artifacts which is exclusive, for example, Spiritbone Torque. Uh, is exclusive for the Goresh and it will be used for the uh, Goresh and Skullgul uh, infantry hero pair. For Madeline and Nika, I think uh, Dragon Rift is the best one because um, it has a keen uh, like skill on the Dragon Rift and uh, Madeline's first skill is has a keen itself, which means it's more of a damage uh, type of legendary hero pair. For the Garwood and the Liana, I would recommend to go with anything what you have. For example, I'm using Springs of Silence. Uh, at least I'm silence, I'm slowing the enemies and it will be easier for me to catch up and to deal some damage. This is all I wanted to speak about infantry meta heroes. Now it's time for us to speak about marksmen. Uh, in general, marksmen is my main uh, legion type. I'm using uh, only marksmen for the battlefield, so I I understand whenever I'm speaking about the marksmen in general. The meta heroes for the marksmen, um, like legendary heroes, there is two actually. Uh, of course, Cinderion and Freygar, one of the best marksmen uh, legions uh, since the introduction of these heroes. They have been a meta heroes and uh, simply because it's a different view, view on the marksman uh, legion type. Uh, for example, Sindrion and Freygar is a more of a normal attack uh, damage dealer. You are going to deal a crits and as much normal attacks as possible. As you can see, Sindrion does not have any damage factor on its main skill, uh, which means uh, like it's a unique type of uh, hero, same as Freygar. Well, Freygar has a, a little bit, 600, but for legendary heroes 600 damage factor is uh, is nothing in my opinion so uh Syndrome and Fregar auto attack normal attack damage dealer one of the best but in my opinion in order to fulfill the full potential of uh, Syndrome and Fregar you need to have Syndrome and Awakened in order to have uh like critical hits uh, and critical hits will give you 400 damage factor whenever you are hitting the enemy the second meta uh, marksman Hero pair, which is unfortunately only for pay to win players, is uh, Kinara and Hosk. Um, uh, it, it's not about damage whenever we are speaking about Hosk and Kinara. It's about being as tanky as possible, uh, staying alive as much as possible during the battlefield, and you are dealing a huge amount of counter attack damage to the enemies. I wish I had Hosk. I wish Hosk was viable for a free to play players, but unfortunately, the only way you can get Hosk is to spend some money on a VIP shop. But maybe in the future we are going to have a chance to obtain the Hosk and I will get my dream to have Hosk and Kinara. Uh, it's easy to understand why this hero pair is really strong. Um, Hosk is giving a lot of buffs, a uh, lot of uh, like additional damage and defensive buffs to the Kinara. And also it's well known that Kinara has one of the best counter-attack damage skill, um, Gracious Rebalance. 30% counter-attack damage deal, physical damage deal, that's a lot. Which means, simply, Hosk is buffing Kinara as much as possible. Uh, Kinara is dealing skill damage factor from her main skill and also uh, counter-attack damage is very, very high. And we don't need to forget that Hosk has one of the best skills in the game, which is uh, maximum Legion capacity bonus 15,000. That's what makes this Legion type so, so good. I won't, I won't gonna speak much about marksmen because in my opinion these two are the main meta uh, marksmen hero pairs currently in the game. Uh, Sindrion and Fregar, Kinara and um, Hosk. But if you don't have Hosk like me, uh, you can always run Kinara with uh, Nico. It will be a skill damage factor type of gameplay but simply because of the both skill damage factors on the main skills uh, on Kinara and uh, on Nico is pretty high. And the, if, I, if you want me to say what kind of uh, hero pair it will be, you are going to break the defenses of the enemy and you are going to use your skills rather than normal attacks. That's my main hero pair in my opinion. I'm running Nico as a primary and Kinara as a secondary, uh, simply because of the precision tree. It's one of the best trees for the marksman, if not the best trees. That's why I would run uh, precision on, on Nico and I would 
match Kinara as a secondary hero. Uh, control 3 is fine, but it's not that good in my opinion. That's why uh, Nico is kind of best uh, option for the Kinara. Uh, regarding like artifacts, of course, still there is a couple of uh, exclusive ones. For example, if you are running um, like any legion with uh, Kinara, I would highly recommend to go with a Rattle Spear. Uh, like high damage factor, defense break, and in general for the Kinara and Nico or host core Kinara, uh, defense break works amazingly. It's a high synergy. If if you are running Syndrion and Fragar, I would highly recommend to go for the Gold Crest. That's a main artifact for Syndrion. You are getting um, Legion Haste, uh, March with bonus, uh, and also like this is generally the best artifact for the for the, the Syndrion. Sometimes whenever a new legendary hero comes to the game, there is a new artifact which follows, and it means it's exclusive artifact for that particular hero. Let's say you don't have a Rattle Spear or Gold Crest like me, unfortunately. You can always run uh, Shadow Blades um, on any kind of marksman heroes. Uh, in my opinion, Shadow Blades is like a must one to have. It's easy to obtain uh, from these simple uh, keys. And also one of the most underrated uh, artifacts in the game, in my opinion, for marksmen is uh, Heart of Gamasi, especially for the Syndrion. Uh, because you are getting physical keen, uh, onslaught damage, and that's like, in my opinion, the perfect one for the uh, people who are running a couple of marksman legions. You're gonna give these buffs to every single marksman legion which is uh, like nearby. There is like one circle around your legions and you are getting those buffs. It will be amazing if you are running a couple of marksman legions like me, for example, I'm running... Nico and Kinara, I'm running Syndrion and Fragar, and I'm running um, Thea and Craig, and I'm playing with Wilderburg. That's my strategy, in addition to the uh, long-range warfare. I'm having a great, great success um, as a free-to-play player in this game. Uh, this is the artifacts which are totally fine to use on the marksman legendary heroes, or in general marksman heroes. Um, I like to play as a marksman, uh, like uh, especially after the introduction of the long-range warfare, it's an amazing uh, gameplay, I'm having a lot of fun and I would highly recommend if you are using couple of range legions during the fights. The next one is mages, we are going to speak about mage meta uh, hero pairs. After the addition of the new heroes uh, Bertrand and uh, Tohar of course, uh, this is the main hero pair for everybody. At first everybody is trying it out. But uh, like if we're gonna look at the talent trees for the Bertrand, the amazing talent trees, skill is one of the best uh, mage talents uh, which you can get for the mage heroes. But still, uh, Lilia is one of the best, uh, most used, I guess, simply uh, because people have already awakened her for a long time before and they don't want to... Uh, like miss the chance of using Lilia. The hero pairs, which is of course the meta currently, is uh, like Lilia and Welin, uh, Lilia with Bertrand, uh, Bertrand with Thea, uh, like Bertrand with Tohar. Which means almost every single uh, mage hero pair is working. Um, that's the idea behind, I guess, uh, for the mages. Like in general, mages are one of the most uh, free to play friendly legions in the game. Which means every single hero pair which are you are going to have will be work uh, will be worked during the battlefield, and it depends on your playstyle. For example, I am running with the Walder and Welling uh, simply because I have Walder Awakened and Walder has a skill talent tree. Let's say you are pay to win player, you would hardly you would be running Lilia with Welling. Uh, of course, great uh, hero pair, great one of the oldest ones actually. Um, and like it will never be not meta these hero pairs because they are dealing a lot of damage if we are speaking about the newest heroes um, Which is meta currently is Bertrand and Tohar uh, I guess people are still trying to figure out what kind of hero pair this is But what I can see from the battlefields around the game a lot of uh, mage players are using Bertrand and Tohar Let's say you don't have Tohar at all um, there, but you want to use Bertrand uh, it's easy to understand, Bertrand is flying hero, Bertrand will be workable with the ATS, ATS will give Bertrand uh, like extra rage gained, uh, like a lot of uh, buffs, like HP bonus, uh, healing is nothing in my opinion, a march speed bonus and damage taken reduction. But if you are honestly playing with the 
uh, League of Order and you want to use Celestials and you want to use Bertrand, I, I think uh, Thea, like Bertrand and Thea will be better choice for flying uh, units uh, simply because of the skill talent tree which Bertrand has. Uh, for the artifacts, there is a huge variety of the artifacts which you can use on the mage uh, legions. For example, let's of course speak about uh, the exclusive artifacts which mages have. If you are running um, Lilia, you should have Infernal Flame. That's the exclusive artifact for the Lilia. And uh, like as a free to play player, I hate uh, Infernal Flame in to the hands of tier 5s because. It deals a lot of damage, it, deal, it it just destroys especially tier 4 players. So Infernal Flame will be for the Lilia hero pairs. Uh, the Mirage Orb is of course easy to understand that it's a main artifact for the Bertrand and you can easily see the Bertrand here on the screen uh, while we are seeing how this artifact works. Let's say you are a player like me, you don't have Mirage Orb, orb you don't have Infernal Flame, but you have Phoenix Eye, in my opinion you can use Phoenix Eye in almost every single uh, mage hero pair, great damage, uh, like you're gonna hit, if you are going to hit the maximum amount of legions, which is 4, uh, you are going to deal a huge amount of damage to the enemies. Of course there is a couple of uh, like uh, supportive style of mage artifacts such as Tear of Arborn, uh, Magic Unit Defense, Legion Defense, that's uh, actually it's for the, mainly for the Thea Atheus, maybe you know, Bertrand Atheus hero pairs, but you can honestly use Tier of Arbon in many different occasions uh, in the game, and you will be really, really happy about the result. Uh, that's what about the mages, like most uh, unique in terms of versatility, almost every single hero is viable, but if we are speaking about the meta heroes, uh, Lilia and Bertrand is a meta hero pairs, like meta heroes, and you can like match any like almost every single uh, deputy mage and it will be uh, working in general. Now in my opinion one of the weakest um, legion types in the game which is cavalry. Uh, if you are not tier 5 player I wouldn't recommend to play as a cavalry. But let's say you still want to do it because you like to move around the battlefield really really fast. Um, you like the gameplay of the sneak attacks and um, running back. Uh, you are playing the cavalry which are of course there is a couple of uh, legendary heroes which are meta for the cavalry uh, which is Forondil, uh, which is uh, Emrys, uh, which is still Bakshi and of course if you are a pay to win player you are going to use Theodore. For the cavalry hero pairs I think still uh, Emrys and Bakshi is popular a lot of I have seen a lot of people use it uh, pay to win players free to play players uh, there is Emrys and the Forondil hero, hero pair I would run um, Emrys as a uh, primary because of the PvP and mobility talent tree it makes Emrys super fast and super viable uh, like generally there is cap there is actually a limited amount of heroes which you can run for the cavalry uh, legion type that's why um, Emrys is still the number one legendary hero in almost every single hero pairs for the cavalry heroes uh, that's why like nothing have changed regarding calves as a meta heroes um, Emrys is most popular and then almost every single uh, spring ward and cavalry player is using foron deal uh, regarding artifacts for the cavalry uh, players, of course, there is a couple of uh, obvious ones. Uh, for example, let's scroll down and I will try my best to explain. Still, Spring Blades is one of the best cavalry unit artifact. It deals a huge amount of damage, especially uh, if you are using it against uh, tier 4 players. Like, uh, throwing gives you damage, uh, return gives you damage if you will just get in the keen attack bonus. In general, I think Spring Blades is the best uh, cavalry unit artifact in terms of uh, killing your enemies and getting as much merits as possible. The second place I would give Kingslayer, um, like pure damage factor um, artifact, up to 5 uh, enemy legions in arc, 5 is a great number. Um, and um, like if you will be able to level up the Kingslayer, you will be really really happy. Let's say you are same player as me and you don't have Kingslayer, you don't have uh, uh, the new artifact uh, which is Spring Blades. Um, of course there is like obvious choice, so Lance Blades, a weaker version of the Kingslayer, uh, like way less um, 
enemy legion still damage too but damage factor is high at least we are getting some haste march speed which is always great for the uh, cavalry legions um, like in my opinion cavalry is still one of the most weakest the legion type in the game if you are not a tier 5 player who is mainly playing a couple of cavalry heroes it means you have your own gameplay and it, it means that you have your own uh, play style uh, for the flying uh, units um, like nothing really have changed uh, thea is the most popular flying hero used in uh, almost every single uh, legion type in the game <clears throat> But whenever we are speaking about uh, flying heroes, we need to speak about the faction. Let's say you are playing uh, the uh, Spring Warden, you are going to use Tia and Porondil for the uh, Flying Eagles. That's the main faction, it's uh, Spring Wardens. And uh, in my opinion, without Forondil and Thea, Flying Eagles are really, really weak. So this is like uh, one hero pair which you are, you are going to use 100%. Let's say you are using uh, League of Order, you are going to use Thea and Bertrand, well, Bertrand and Thea, uh, and you are going to run Celestials. And the weaker version of the Bertrand is, of course, Atheist. You are going to have a way less damage than having Bertrand, but still, it's a viable option, and that's why I'm speaking about it. Uh, for the Wilderberg, um, which I am right now, I'm using Thea as a primary and uh, Craig as a secondary. In my opinion, soon we are going to get flying uh, marksman hero and I will be able to replace my Craig uh, uh, with the new legendary hero. That's my uh, future idea how everything will work. Work. In general, flying units and flying uh, heroes are attached to the faction you are playing. That's what it makes so good. Um, and it's not that versatile, but Ia as a legendary hero is amazing. Pure Buffer, one of the best supportive heroes, and whenever we are speaking about flying uh, units, uh, first legendary hero we need to speak is Thea. Uh, for the artifacts, there is a, of course a variety of the artifacts you can use on Thea. Uh, for example, Tear of Arbon is amazing for the mage type of gameplay with the Thea. Um, if you are running with the like, generally defensive type of gameplay, I think Visage of the Songtum is uh, main artifact, kind of one of the best artifacts for flying heroes and especially for Thea, uh, which unfortunately I don't have it. But in general, uh, Thea is most versatile legendary hero, you can use every single artifact on her depending on your legion type. That's why uh, at first look at your faction, you can look at your special unit and then decide which kind of artifact you are going to use on her. This is like meta update for the season TI from George, uh, free to play player, uh, like I don't even have Lilia unfortunately, but that's my gameplay, that's uh, how I decided to play this game. I hope my videos are helping you guys, I hope you are getting information that you need. If you do, uh, press like, subscribe, share, it always gives me more and more motivation to make more uh, content for this amazing game. Thanks for watching, I hope you are having an amazing day, night or morning, uh, wherever you are. I'm gonna see you very very soon. Bye bye and good luck.